record is called Elizabethan, and it's actually a um, it's actually an instrumental, which and it's kind of possibly a slightly odd odd way of starting a double album of songs of lyrics with an instrumental. But we just thought well, it, it sounds good and it sets the album up, and, and it, 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 that was a song that that I tried to put words to, but in the end I couldn't really quite manage it, and it just seemed to sound okay as an instrumental, so we, so we stuck with that, rather than clogging it up with dumb head words. I think even after we'd recorded it, it was sounding, and we thought, oh, that's sounding good, you know, and I think you were still thinking of putting some lyrics to yeah, it. Yeah, I was thinking, considering trying to... I, just, I think I just said, oh, look, don't worry, it just sounds good. Trying to easy. impose some words on it. Yeah. It work. I mean, you, I think we tried, we'd spent about three years making this album, there was a lot of songs on it, so... We did a, there's quite a few songs that didn't make it on the albums, but we also recorded, so, um, uh, with things like Elizabethan, we were just experimenting, really, just trying different things and keeping it pretty loose, whatever made it, whatever sounded good, you know, it's like Joe Meek, you know, they used to make all the, the, um, the gadgets and record a lot, of a producer in, uh, in London in the 60s. He just, his, his um, logo on his all gadgets that he made for pedals and distortion units was, um, and, and um, he did preamps and things. He said, uh, but if it sounds good, it is good. <laughs> so that's about all you've got to go on, really, with, with, with music. That's a bit like our motto, rough enough is good enough. Rough enough is good enough. Well, it's not like that at all, actually. Well, that Speed of Light um, was a song that, you know, we've been working on. And we'd put down the rhythm track for it with the drums and um, you know basic guitars, and I was sort of fiddling around with it. I just couldn't quite get it to sound quite right. So one night I was trying a bass line. I tried a few different bass lines on it, and I picked up my acoustic bass, which has got a little preamp and a battery in it. And the, um, I was sort of it was very quite late in the evening. I would just have a quick go at it because I was so frustrated. I tried something and. You know, the part sounded right, but the little battery in it was completely gone. There was a tiny fraction of life still in it. So the, the sound of the bass was totally distorted. And I thought, oh, well, that's not quite what I'm after. But I played it, played it, and I thought, that doesn't sound too bad. So I came back the next morning. I thought, actually, that sounds like that's the sound I'm after. So I kept that battery in it, finished the whole track with a completely distorted bass, which just sounds a bit different to a fuzz box or you know, a distortion pedal or something. I think it's just got, a, it's got its own unique kind of completely distorted sound, but uh, it just sounded great. It sounded like a little bank of tenor saxophone, uh, baritone saxophones and something. So, um, so that's one of those accidents where you get something happening with song that you, you never predicted or devised. Man. One of the songs on on our album is called Ray Davies and the Kinks, and it was obviously it is about Ray Davies and the Kinks, but. The story in the song is kind of true because we were driving to a, um, a festival at Apollo Bay a couple of years ago um, and we were listening to a Kinks best of in the car and, uh, and, and the liner notes were talking about how this, these are songs of melancholy and disappointment and we thought that was a funny, funny bit of you know, rock criticism so that's well, the basis of the song really. so it's a song based on rock criticism. Well it's not really criticism, kind of, it was more, well, more just a uh, liner notes. Yeah, observational observation kind of notes. Uh, Ray Davis did write beautiful, poignant, sort of sad, uh, plaintive sort of songs. So, um, yeah, I think we sort of tried to capture that, that atmosphere in the song too. The sort of descending bass lines and sad and sort of back and forth. Beautiful. But they think that the kids were so good at. Because yeah, Ray Davis was one of the great English songwriters. One of our all time favourites. Yeah. favourites. Yeah. Camel Rock is down the south coast. I can't tell you where exactly. No, don't tell them where it is. No. But uh, it's very special and it's where I go for holidays. So I wrote a song about it. Beautiful song too. Camel Rock. Let's do, um, ask questions on our Facebook page. They're, they're very welcome to and we will attempt to um, give sensible answers to those questions. Don't